Thank you for being here. And uh, it is very small where you're at, but uh, please hold on to the comments. Don't worry about that. All right. Welcome to our summit. Excited to have you be here. And welcome to those who are on Zoom from California and or St. George that are, are here watching with us. We are going to get started this morning. And right away, the first thing we're going to do here from Inspiro, who is sponsoring our lunch today, so give them a hand. Yeah. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good
Um, just reach out to Jennifer Morris um, at Inspira Financial, or if you're in California, Kendall Baker is your go-to girl. Also, our loan officers um, have all this information you can get you set up easily as well. So we look forward to working with you. And like you said, like I said, if you have questions, we're at the back table there, and uh, we'll be here all day. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you to Inspiro. We also want to recognize and thank the other one team partners. So, All Valley Escrow, uh, North Star Title, and Seller's Choice NHD. So, thank you to all of you that help support us in our, in our business. All right, next, we are going to recognize from All Valley here, give a special uh, congratulations to Kendall Baker. Most of you have never had the chance to meet Kendall, and you're missing out, is just what I'll tell you. She never comes to Utah, you gotta make sure you meet because she is amazing. And one of the things that Kim Cruz said about her is she's always willing to step up and help out around for anybody who needs anything. So, congratulations to Kendall for the quarter for the Now, for North Star title here in Utah, the employee of the quarter is Crystal Cruz. To do any work with North Star and or with Crystal, you need to. I she personally closed a loan for her, not a loan, but a transaction for me, and she went above and beyond. So she definitely deserves to be the employee of the for North Star. So, awesome. All right. Next announcement we have is for the save the date item. So first one is coming up here on the street is elevate. So at the Marriott in downtown, the dates for Elevate are August 17th to the 19th. If you want to attend, we've got in the back here, uh, Mark and Brad, and I don't know who the guy in the middle is. Austin. Austin, in back there. So if you want to get signed up, you can go talk to them today to get signed up for this event, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. All right, next on your, uh, is the Summit Creek. So George is going to come up and talk to us a little bit about that, and I'm just going to remind him that we have speakers who have time today, so you're taking your own time. <laughs> really? I have a stage fright going on right now. All right, hey, how's everybody doing today? Thank you, really. Thank you. Yeah. Isn't it nice to be together? Like, wow. Like, so good to see everybody here. So, hey, so this uh, Save the Day, this uh, Luau, so we have three days. So, if you're not familiar with Summer Creek, which I was not initially when we started going down there, so that's down in Woodland Hills, down in the Salem area, right down in that area. And if you have not seen the views looking basically south to north up through Utah Lake, they are epic views. In fact, it's just so you know, when we drove up there with the next ramp, she said, because she grew up in Spanish Fork, she said, this is where I used to make out. That is true. That is true. I just want you to know. It is quite the place. So just want you to know that. But it is absolutely awesome. Seriously, it truly is. So I hope that you'll get a chance to get down there. Uh, looks like it's August 20th. And then I think the first thing, just get, you look here is, look, the first realtor to sell a piece of property down there or a home, Magnolia, uh, is going to receive an additional $20,000 close to 3%. Uh, they have also, they've got one of the great homes down there, as I understand it, and it is a beautiful development. Who's been down there? Anybody seen those down there? Man, they, they are incredible, and uh, some incredible building, incredible lots. You name it. So, Matt, did you have something? Just to clarify, the, the incentives you see there are after the Lua. After the Lua. All right, thank you. Nancy, is there something else? Well, I was just going to say, then the second and third agent, their bonus is 10000 plus the 3%, and we always get 3% on the homes and lots. Right. So, yes, it's a combination of the lot and the home. So, just again, an amazing place. And then we look, just to go down there and become familiar with it, it is a a place that you will not forget, just like the neck has never forgotten. <laughs> All right, is that it? All right, make sure you're there, August 20th. All right, 
Next is Calabunga Bay. Uh, Jen Morris just told me this is where her and George used to make out. <laughs> so put that one down on in your uh, calendar for August 27th from 6 to 9. Now, if you haven't been to this or brought your family, make sure you do come and participate with that. It is a great event. The kids love it. And it's a great opportunity to just get together and get to know each other outside of, of real estate. All right, next, prospecting school. So the dates for this, we've got an August 30th, the 31st, or September 13th and 14th. Again, if you want to participate, back in the room, sign up today. You will get more transactions by signing up for this. If you look at the cost and the return on the investment for that, it'll be a huge return on your investment for the 395. How many transactions, if you got from that, would it take to pay for that? Obviously, a lot less than one, right? All right, next. So, upcoming summits. So, next month, September 14th, we'll be back here at the Awaken Event Center on the September 14th at noon. And then, drum roll for you guys in California. Their first live event since COVID hit a uh, summit, which is September 16th. And the location for that is going to be the Courtyard area in Agora Hills. I actually stayed there the last time I was down in California. It is an awesome place. And it's, in fact, while I was there, I was thinking, why are we not doing events at, at the Courtyard? So anyway, for you guys in California, that to look forward to. All right, next. Another Elevate Live event will be coming up in October, the 12th through the 14th. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not, but if you want to sign up, right in the back of the room. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, next, uh, November 11th through the 14th in Florida. You want an excuse to go to Florida, this is it. Go down there for the Unleash the Power Within with Tony Robbins, which is obviously another live event that we, he's doing. And I, is that the first one he's doing live? It's the first live event this year. It's limited. There's only 6,000 people and he's almost so right? So yeah, so jump on it now. Get signed up for that. All right, next. March of next year is 121, which is just going to be in Las Vegas, so you can drive down to watch us get our award for being the top office in the uh, whole system, right? right? Yeah, in the universe. So. All right, so put that in your schedule, March 23rd. And then the last of our Save the Dates is the top producer trip for 20, in 2022, so for this year, is going to be in Hawaii. April 17th to the 24th. So make sure you put that in your calendar and keep prospecting so that you can qualify to be there. All right, next. Where is Next is the quarterly awards. Here we go. So here's the, so for these quarterly awards, um, let me just kind of, we're gonna go through both Utah and California, but wanna make sure that the people from California know the California winners will next month at that live summit will get their photo taken and they'll get their um, swag or award, whatever it is we're talking about. So, all right. But for those that are here in, in person for, in Utah, as I say your name, if you just will stand up on this and then uh, they can come up afterwards after the summit's over and we've got the plaque and things and they'll do some pictures after. So for now, just we'll have you stand up. All right, so get the first award is the Sherpa Award. The Sherpa's job at Mount Everest is to set up camp and ensure that everyone is taken care of. They can carry a heavy load. The Everest Sherpa Award is given out quarterly to an employee who goes above and beyond to serve our agents, their clients, and other colleagues. Our 2021 second quarter award winners are, and I know you already saw the first one, for California is Mary Watkins. Mary always greets everyone warmly when they come into the office, and I will tell you that is true. Every time I walk in there, she's got a big smile on her face. She is willing to help anyone who asks for assistance. Mary works with Armani to keep the vibe in the office upbeat, and together they plan fun events for their agents. Mary works in the dot loop files and has never hesitated when asked to help one of the other administrators or TCs with questions. So let's give a hand to uh, Mary. Okay, uh, Makaili <laughs> Dynasty. Makaili the Department, serving as the Creative Services Manager. She always goes above and beyond to answer every, every request that comes in, and believe me, there's a lot of them. 
She is highly skilled and brings great energy to our space. We're fortunate to have her on our marketing team. And I would just say fortunate for all of us. So give her another round of applause. All right, next is the Everest Anchor Award. An anchor is a reliable or principal support in mountaineering. It's a fixed object to which a climber's rope is secured. Here at Century 21 Everest, we give an anchor award quarterly to a manager or a broker who goes beyond, above and beyond to help the agents get to the next level. Turn the page. Which one was the screen? All right, for California, Luis Rodriguez is the winner of this award. to educate them on how to sell real estate. He offers many classes, including role play, and recently had them attend a virtual Tony Robbins event. Lewis inspires his agents to work at their highest level and achieve their goals. So thanks again to Lewis for all of your hard work. All right, and for Utah, we're excited to recognize Alex Cornwall for the second quarter in the world. having an incredible year of recruiting and coaching agents in his office. According to his agents, Alex has a crazy fun energy and truly cares about them and challenges them to be their best and achieve their goals. Today is his one year anniversary with the company too, by the way. So give Alex a chance. <laughs> Next is the Everest Mountaineer Award. A mountaineer ascends and scales up a mountain in order to reach a peak. Each quarter, Everest recognizes an agent who exemplifies the Everest culture of personal growth and contribution. An agent who excels in production, contributes to the community, and participates in Everest training and events. And so for California, the award winner is Leslie, Leslie, sorry, Leslie Mitsuchi. In addition to being a fabulous real estate agent, Leslie has volunteers at her daughter's school, which is Rio Mesa High School in Austin. She has helped with the PTA in all classroom activities. They call her the helicopter mom. Her daughter was a valedictorian in her senior year, so all her hard work has paid off. We appreciate the difference she makes in our company and the community. So give Leslie a hand if you would. And from Utah, our award winner is Matt Salter. So Matt. truly exemplifies being in the business to serve people. His show up, uh, this shows up with his consistent repeat and referral business. Matt volunteers with the humanitarian group Youth Link Training High School and College Age Youth to serve their communities at home and abroad. From, from every closing, Matt donates to build wells in Africa. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Thank you, Matt Salter, for your outstanding service. So we have Matt We're going to do our uh, quarterly awards. Not good. All right, so let's bring it up here. So this, first, we're gonna, these are the anniversaries for people. So this is five-year anniversaries with the company. And if you're here, if you'll please stand up as I say your name. So Adam Clough from Union Park, Brittany uh, Andra, Union Park, David Malone, Forum, Delphina Cord, Centerville, Gabriela Hernandez, Channel Islands, Gabriela Tellez, Ventura, Kathleen Lim, CME or Wood Ranch Office, Keith Munden, Centerville, Lily Lobo, Centerville, Luis Tevedo, Westlake Village, Mike Hancock, I love these words. Yeah. All right, Unit Park, Nicole Tippett, Orem, Randall Lay, Orem, Ray Lewicki, CME Wood Ranch, Sherry Robinson, Centerville, Thomas Costa, CME Wood Ranch, and Tristan Hurd, Union Park. Maria Nolan at the Simi Wood Ranch office, so I'm sure she's standing up. Here. 15 years, Dottie Blum, Wesley Village, and Monica Meza, Simi Wood Ranch. 20 years from Camarillo, Tim Hall. All right, awesome. Thanks for your devoted service. Next, quarterly awards. Here we go. So these are people who have made 25,000 in the last quarter. Andrea Roeder, Bernadette Schneibel, 
Bobby Rossi, Cynthia Aguilar, Dalia Rule, Daniel Andrizi, Debbie Nickel, Deborah Poole, Derek Timmons, Amelia Ramirez, Faye Lynn, Dale Coffey, BJ Brazil, Jean Seck, hopefully I said that right, Jeffrey Riggs, Jesus Longeren, Joanne Featherstone, Mutal Tawa, Kathleen Lem, Kim Clemens, Christina Walton, Lenny Van, Maggie McKinney, Mark Fellows, Monica Meza, Peter Derridix, Phil Hendricks, Rick Lindland, Robbie Starr, Roberta McWaters Alesso, Robin Karshich, hopefully, Will, Rosie Wilcox, Sandra Ramirez, Scott and Maya Puckett, Sam Patrick, Stephen Lawson, Stuart Monteith and Hale King, Thomas Costa, Troy Marcus, and Walter Martinez. Give them a hand. Thank you. Christopher Armstrong, Dakota Murdoch, 
Deanna Haskin, Jason West, Jeanette Davis, Lou Train, Matt Salter, Marilyn Lee, Robert Naylor, Rosie Chata, Ruby Reese, Scott Laxton, The Stable Group, Sterling Satterfield, Terry Taylor, I thought I'd get some of the people. There she is. Anna. And then Traverse Advisors and Utah House Science Team. All right. Andy Fletcher, Deborah Delaney, Don McGuire, Gavin Lindeen, Irma Arvin, uh, uh, close enough. All right. Jeff Rosenblum, Ken Gretsch, Leslie Cruzberger, Monica, Veronica Salazar, and Wen Fernandez. Sorry, All right. Oh, no, we're still California. Here we go. The Plisky Group and the Zente Asarte and Associates. Fantastic. Here we go. 100,000 in Utah. Aaron Oldham, Brandon Newell, Brenda Lee Jones, Brian McKean, Chad Moore, Chad Morris, Castine Team, Joanna Williams, Mike Harris, Mindy Daly, Steve Boynton, Steve Henriot, Trent Rogers, and Will Walk. 25,000 in California. Debbie Briscoe and the Ramos Group. For Utah, 125,000. Dan Munch. And Dan Munch. Evan Child. Evan, or Heather Mercer. Dave Bentley. Mike Hancock. And Noel Elmer. Nikki Munoz. In Utah, La Chinita team, Richardson Real Estate, and Utah Listing Team. $150,000 in California. Kay Wilson Bolton and Maria Nolan. $150,000 in Utah. We got Aaron Christensen, April Oaks, and all right, 150,000 from Utah is the Luxury Agency. And 175,000 in California, Judy Lewicki. 175,000 from Utah, Jessica Terry Schneider and team, Utah Homes Live, and Utah Listing Service. 200,000 from California, Brianna Steen. And from Utah, Amber Wood. And the eight Clark team. <laughs> 225,000 for Utah. Austin Kales and Jeremy Bass. <laughs> All right, 225,000 for Utah. Luxury Group and CTR, CT Realty Infinity. <laughs> Brett Belknap and Utah Best Real Estate. <laughs> 250,000 for California, Blake Mansford and Ray DeSilva. <laughs> 300,000 for Utah, David Parker and Justin Ayer. <laughs> for California, 50,000, Trisha Perez and Associates. 325,000, Ray Kruger and <laughs> 250,000, Doug Carey. 425,000, California, Kathleen Rudo. And 425,000, Utah, Justin Udy and team, and Utah Listing Pros. Also, 450 in Utah, Brett Belknap team. And 650,000, now remember, this is for the quarter, right? 650,000, the Josh Johnson team. In California. Tina Heron Associates, 800,000. And 825,000 in St. George is Brian Burnett, and up here in Salt Lake, View Utah Listings. And 1.25 million. Sam will hear from George and he will wrap us up. So come on up, Sam. <laughs> 
But then what happened is we landed at the airport uh, in the Dominican, near the kids, and the trip leader, one of the trip leaders, the guides, came to me and said, hey, we have two kids who can't find their luggage. You speak Spanish, right? And I kind of looked at him and went, mm, hey, I don't know. We can hack together something. Uh, he's like, could you go uh, talk to somebody about where the luggage is for these two kids? And I said, sure. But could you just tell me what the word for suitcase is? <laughs> and he looked at me and said, I don't know. I speak Chinese. You're the one that speaks Spanish. And I realized this horrible realization in that moment that when I was filling out my little application to be the guy that was covered in the background, it said, do you speak any other languages? And I was tempted to put none, but then I felt guilty, so I put Spanish kind of. And whoever the powers that be were decided, God, we've got somebody who can help. Perfect. Send the Chinese speaker with them. They'll be fine. Right? <laughs> right? Got the lady at the airport, and I kind of hacked together some really brutal Spanish, and we found what I said was bolsa, which is the word for sack. Supposed to melt. Got the suitcases. <laughs> we're on our way. Right? Over the next several days, really, over the about the next ten days, this realization of I, my role in this story is now as guide. People are going to come to me thinking I am the expert. And each day I will learn a little more. Day one, I was the expert in, in the sightseeing tours, right? The, 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 the actual guides. The guide, people come to me and they'd say, you know, get the kids and we can do this. And I'd kind of be like, I think he said, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm supposed to go over there and maybe put on a helmet. Hopefully nobody does. Um, but I, I had to relearn and resurrect Spanish within a very short period of time. I want to get that. Which to me was absolutely <laughs> exhausting. Right? There were new construction terms I had to use. There were all kinds of words that I had. One, I never learned and had to relearn. The thing was, everybody there was looking at, at me as the expert on the job site. The contractor would come to me and say, hey, tell the kids to do this. I heard this all day. Someone, someone, do it, do it, someone, do it. Between Sam, that's me. I knew that one. Tell them, tell them to do this and tell them to do that. So if you're in the market for someone who can lay block crooked or too short or not level, I'm your guy. Right? I know that there were occasions on this trip where my my expertise did not meet standard and we did something wrong. And it wasn't because we were told to do it wrong, it's because it hit me and it's the weak spot. Now that's not what you need to be in your client story. You should be the strong point. That's why they hired you, to be expert. And the thing that they want to hear is the same thing that the people in the Dominican wanted to hear from me and the, and the kids wanted to hear from me. And that was this, get out your pens and papers and write this down. I know what you're struggling with, and I can help you solve it. Okay, I know what you're struggling with, and I can help you solve it. Those are the words that your clients, that your customers, people you work with, are craving to hear from you as your, their guide, right? I know what you're dealing with. Been there, done that, we can solve it, right? Um, and that's why you're getting paid the big bucks. There's two parts of this, though, that I, that I want to hit on that I think are really important. And these are the keys to being a very successful good guy. The first part's found, oh, go back. <laughs> the first part's found in that first phrase, I know what you're struggling with. That sounds a lot like empathy, right? I, I can see it, I can feel it. We're in this together as partners. And be emotional. The next piece is I can help you solve it, and that's the that's authority and your expertise, right? Been there, done that, have the t-shirt, your master yoga, should be right. Um, so let's talk about empathy. Empathy is you feeling an emotion with someone, right? And how do you do that? How do you do that as an agent when you're working with your client? You need to ask questions. Well, a lot of times we make assumptions. We go, okay, I've been through a thousand real estate transactions. Oh, they're so boring. Let's see what part might be troubling. We can't make those assumptions. You need to sit down with your client and talk to them and really try to get an understanding 
of what their concerns are. Sit down with them, say, okay, you know, you're listening side. You're, we're gonna list your house. What concerns do you have? Well, I, I hear the market's crazy. Can I get into another house? I don't know what's the timing gonna look like. I hear my house is selling 38 minutes, and I'm really scared about that because of all these other things. Now you know what they're worried about. You can identify with them, right? Sit down with your buyers. What are your concerns? Oh, financing is scary. I've never gotten a loan bigger than a car before. And now I'm gonna borrow more than I make in a year or two years or 10 years to buy a house. Is that a good thing to do? Is that a bad thing to do? I hear it's hard. I hear loan officers are scary. We can introduce it because I love loan officers. Well, it's scary, right? But you need to sit down and talk to them and get them to understand, ask questions, understand what they're, where they're coming from. That builds trust because then you can display empathy. I know financing is crazy. The first time I went and financed the house, I was terrified. But guess what? We've got a great team, we can help you. You can build that trust. Now, it's not just with your clients. You should do it with the other side. Get on the phone, talk to the other side. Hey, well, on the buyer said, hey, we have got a buyer who's interested. What are your seller's biggest concerns? Right? Try to connect as a guide, not with your clients, but become part of the other side's story. Connect with them as well. Okay? And that lends itself once you've created that trust to the authority part, right? Which is the expertise part. Now, when, when they sit down with you to, to really develop expertise, you've got to do really three things. And I've learned this throughout my career. When people come to me and ask me for advice, there's like three things you really need to be proficient at to become the expert. Thing one, you've got to know and have some insight into the other side. Now, I just told you, call the other side. Like, create some empathy there. Help them, help them feel like you're on their team to get a deal done. But ask them a lot of questions. What questions? All the questions. All the questions you'd ever want, your client would ever want to know. Because when you sit down with your client, you will be better equipped to help them understand what the lay of the land looks like, what this transaction looks like, what, what the mystery on the other side of this deal really is. And then it's not a mystery. The second thing you need to do is you need to be proficient enough as a real estate professional to develop options. What are our options? Okay, buyer, you're scared. You're nervous about having to go make 58 offers before you find a house. Every time you sit down and write that offer, talk about options with them. And you're going to base your options in part on your expertise. And if you don't have expertise, look around this room. There are a bunch of people up there that have done a lot of deals. They are here to help you. I'm here to help you. Russ is here to help you. George is here to help you. We want to help you develop that expertise so you can identify options. But that's not where it ends. And that's where a lot of people stop. They go, okay, here's your options. Um, you can write an offer or not. So what do you want to do? That's not enough. No one likes that, right? You can give them, you should give them all kinds of options. I learned that you can always say nothing. You can do nothing. That's always an option. Now that's a throwaway, right? But it's an option. The more options you can lay out, the more complicated you look. But that's only half of that equation. Because once you talk to your clients, and I mean, most of us in this room have had this experience, we say, hey, clients, here's your option. What do you want to do? They look at you and they go, well, you're the expert. What should I do? Right? This is where the expertise really kicks in. I feel like I've only done half my job if somebody comes to me and says, hey, Sam, we've got this thing. What do we do? And I just go, okay, here's some options. What do you want to do? Look at that. I go, that's being a lazy guy. That is a lazy guy, right? I need to have a well-reasoned recommendation. You know what? I would recommend you make this offer at X, which is competitive pricing, but throw in an, an intent. Throw in something that's not money. Throw in pizza for a year. Do something like that to really stand out. I think that would really be good. Now, it's important when you give a recommendation not to become emotionally tied to your recommendation as the only right answer, because clients will go in a direction all the time. And if you emotionally tie yourself and your ego to that recommendation, you're going to be hurt and disappointed when they say, yeah, no, let's just do it this way, okay? But options and recommendations, and that shows them that you have been there, you have done that. Yeah, 
So as a guide, you need to show empathy and you need to show authority. And if you do that, people will follow you. Who wouldn't want to follow someone who goes, I understand your problems and I have the solution. Come with me. Everybody's gonna follow you, even the other side. They're gonna follow you, okay? So you are the guide in your client's story. You are the expert that's going to help the hero, your client, accomplish their mission. And I promise you, if you do that, they will follow you. Thank you all for your time.
Leadership is not a position. It's so badly we want it to be. I am this. I am this. I am the CEO. I am the broker. I am the agent of all agents. I have this title, that title. Look at all my designations. But the reality is no one cares. Just so you know, no one cares. And I could still remember years ago in running another real estate company, and I remember how unconcerned I was about the title that I had. Because the reality, if you ever get a chance, which you should read this book, and it's called, You Don't Need a Title to Be a Leader. And it is a short read. You don't need a title to be a leader. Leadership is a skill. It is single-handedly, in my belief, it is the single most important skill set you will ever learn in your lifetime. It is the single most important thing that will impact your children, your relationships, your friendships, your business, your health, and the obvious, that the most important person you're gonna lead is yourself. So all of you are a leader. Every one of you, as you wake up every morning, you lead. Now, whether you wanna push it aside and say, no, 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 I'm not that, that's not who I am. The reality is you are. You are a leader. And if you want to truly be happy, if you want more joy, if you want more success, it's all going to be determined on who you become as a leader. And the great reward will not be things you receive, the money, the wealth, the abundance that come from great leadership. I promise you, you'll look back in your life and you'll say, man, the most important thing that came to me was not what I achieved in regards to it or what I acquired. It will be who I became or who I have become in this process. You guys know that. You've heard that from me for years, anyone who's been around me, that if you can figure out who you have to become, then the earning of money single-handedly is one of the easiest things that you will do in this business. This business is not about just even making phone calls. It's not about the mechanics. Leadership is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. There's not one of you in here who cannot say, do you have any plans on moving soon? Does anybody have a problem with that? Can you, Taylor, can you say that? I just wanna make sure you can say that. <laughs> Jason, you can say that. John, you can say that, right? All of us can say any script, any dialogue, but have you not figured out yet that it is not what you say, it is how you say it. And the how is determined by the psychology of what you believe you are. So just even the declaration within yourself to declare yourself that you are a leader, that I lead myself, I lead my family, I lead my children, I lead an extraordinary life. I am a leader. We say, man, that sounds like a lot of work. It is. Because the most difficult work that you'll ever do will be the work that's going on on the inside, not on the outside. And so many of us are so committed to thinking that everything will be fixed if we could just get better leads. Push like the teams up. Oh, if I just got better leads, it'd be better. No, not better leads. You need to be better. You need to be a better leader. You need to be a better communicator. You need to be more highly skilled. You need to be more empathetic. You need to have all of these things that are re required for extraordinary leadership. This isn't a cut down, this isn't a point your finger, this is just a wake up call that if you will wake up to the idea that if you become the leader that is necessary, you will never have another financial problem the rest of your life. And so often we will look at people and we'll see like a Dave Parker up there, 1.25 million in his team, 300 grand over the last three months, well into the one percentile of wealth in this world. But the reality is, is I remember Dave Parker sitting in a really old building where he sat, where it was a home builder supply off of 215, the first time I met him, probably about 15 years ago. And I can remember him asking me some of the most simple questions of how to do this, and how to do that, and what do I do when this happens, what do I do when that happens? And between himself and Jeremy, of course, they built a great little company, Elite Realty Group, they merged with us, we came together, and I've watched him just absolutely rocket over these last several years. But what I do know is it's not just the fact that he was throwing my success. What I know about Dave is his commitment to be an extraordinary 
clear. For some reason, we get into this business thinking that we can put in a little bit of effort, just a few hours of work, and maybe, just maybe, we'll make it all back, and we'll hit the lottery. We'll be like Las Vegas, five dollars of effort. We'll receive. I'll receive five thousand dollars back. That is. That is. That is the mindset of someone who is on the pathway to poverty. Remember that. So the key here is to be an extraordinary leader. So as we go through today, I want to share with you four key points in regards to leadership. But I want to share with you where my first instance, where the wake up call came to me. That it, the requirement for me is to lead. How many of you want to be a better leader? All right? The three quarters of you. This is perfect. So the other 25%, just don't worry about what I'm saying. Right? If you can, try to pay attention. How many of you want to be a better leader? Seriously. Because with that leadership, what comes with it is every single piece of your dream, your goals, the life that you want to live. So stop convincing yourself that you are okay right now in regards to where you stand. If I was sitting one-on-one -on -one with Dave, I'd be like, what's next? Who do you have to become to get to two million? Who do you have to become to get to three million? You say, well, George, when does it stop? Never. Never. Because the reality is, is that there's more. And you have the capacity, you have the opportunity, you have the possibility of more. And so I want to speak to you like that. Because I know that every one of you has a desire, a dream, a goal, something so critically important to you that you want. You want it so badly, and you may say, okay, wait, I don't know how to get there. In the words of Les Brown, you don't need to worry how. Because first and foremost becomes a psychology of what you are determined to get. No matter what happens, you find and you figure out a way. That's great leadership. So for me, I remember on a late summer afternoon, I remember coming to my house, and at this time, I had this, I would say this impression, I would say this calling within me, that I knew, my parents had been divorced, and I knew that I was supposed to go and live with my mother. And I had a mother who had muscular dystrophy, so I had a little bit of trouble getting around, and I also had a sister, 29 years old at that time. And she also had muscular dystrophy. You know anything about muscular dystrophy? It is a wicked disease. It attacks your organs, your muscles, and basically depletes you of all your strength to where they finally just simply give out. My mother passed away when she was 65 years old of lung failure. Everything else, in so many words, was fine. And she really, frankly, was quite old from the standpoint of the disease. But I remember I was 19 years old and I had this strong impression, you better go home. And I went home, and as I came home, I fiddled around, fumbled around. But the night before that, I had another strong impression. I said, I don't know if my sister's going to be here much longer. Now, my sister was mentally handicapped. Uh, she had muscular dystrophy. She had her moments where it seemed like she was almost going to pass away, but there was nothing that would indicate to you that she was going to pass away. And I can still remember that moment. And I can remember that I felt this strong impression, boy, you better tell her that you love her. And so I told my sister, Melinda, I said, gee, uh, that night I was crawling into bed and had rooms right next to each other. And I said, good night, Melinda. And she said, can you give me a washcloth? she had a headache. And I said, no, you need to get up and get it yourself, because the moment you stop using your legs, you must go to this free, it's gone. And she said, please, can you just get it for me? But then at that point, I was like, well, I could get it, but then I don't want to get up either. So, and then I'm like, come on, I'll get it up. And I'm probably a little bit grumpy about it. I'm like, okay, here you go. And I'm feeling a little guilty, too. So then I'm laying in my bed, and I say these words. I say, Melinda, I love you. And the last words I heard from my sister was this, I know. And then we went to sleep. And then that next day, I woke up. And I had my whole day, and that afternoon, as I said, I felt this, it, this strong feeling to go home. I heard it, and I went home. As I went home, I was just hanging out in my bedroom, and all of a sudden, I hear the screaming of uh, the bus driver 
my sister home for a little workshop. And what had happened is that she was on the little bus where they would pick it up, pick you up in your home because of her handicap or her situation, and they would pick her up and take her to her workshop and her school and bring her back. And she could walk. In fact, you would have thought if you'd met her, you wouldn't have thought anything of it. You'd have to really get to know her whether you thought she was handicapped or not. She had the education or kind of the, 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 the quality of uh, or equal of, uh, of about a fifth grader. You, you weren't quite sure if she was handicapped. But it'd take you a few minutes to figure out, wait a second, and all she's all there. Much like most real estate agents. But that's all <laughs> right? But we're, we're, we're sitting there. I'm, I'm sitting in my room, and I remember hearing my mother scream. And I remember the garage door opening and the pounding of the door because they had actually called ahead, and they had said that my, my sister wasn't breathing. So she was sitting on the, on the, on the, uh, the bus, and she had passed away. But she was sitting there. Obviously, that moment, I have to tell you, as everybody was standing around looking at each other in complete shock, it was that moment where I can still remember that call to go act and to go do something. So I remember picking her lifeless body up off of the bed, off of the, the chair, and laying her on the ground in my own room, because my room was connected to the garage. And I remember I had a cousin that had just shown up. I don't know, you know, I know many of you have lost people that are so near and dear to you, but that moment of going and doing CPR on your own sister and watching, you know, life never come back into her. Paramedics showed up, people were literally, I remember my grandmother screaming, and at that moment, I remember trying to calm everybody down, and my people were arguing, yelling, screaming, telling, you know, telling people to leave her with me and, that, you know, stop trying to revive her because life had been so difficult for her already before. But I still remember coming away from that moment recognizing that very few people step up and lead. And I don't know what it was at 19 years old, but I remember it. And then I remember at 21 years old, I met a man by the name of Steve Ford. He said, you know him, I've said this for years before. And I remember he said to me, don't ever forget, one man, one woman can make all the difference in the world. Some of you, in your homes and in your work, your personal life, your business life, are called to lead, and you're choosing not to. You're deflecting it. You're deferring from it. You're even rebelling against it. Maybe by the way you dress, maybe by the where you show up, maybe by how you stand, by how and where you are, you somehow resist the call of leadership. And you resist the call with you in your own families at times. You resist the call in your communities, maybe in your churches. You resist the call in business. And yet you're called to lead. You're called to lead at an extraordinary level, not because really maybe even the world needs you. It's because you need it. You need to figure out how to lead, not only yourself, but others. The ability to think about what, what, think about what leadership is, the ability to influence people's emotions, their heart, to influence their actions and what they do, to influence the way they think and what they believe. Talk about a stewardship. Talk about a responsibility. Talk about a great need of today's society and today's world. There's never been a greater time. So are you called to lead and yet you push against it? Are you called to step forward but you resist? Are you called to be something greater than you are today? I don't know. But what I do know is that you need to lead. And you need to be conscious and awake and mindful and aware of the fact that you are needed, not only by your own family, not only by your own identity, not only by others, but specifically, of course, in the game of real estate and those that you lead, those that are your clients, because who they will follow always will be the person who is the strongest leader in the room, the home, whatever you want to call it. That's who they follow. They follow the person who they know is going to protect them. You want to talk about leadership? I think it's three things. I talk about this all the time. It's about protecting people. It's about teaching people. And it is about inspiring people and moving them into action. If there's never been a greater call for the people you serve, that you love, you care for, that you earn money from, protect them, teach them, and inspire them. Inspire them to take action. Inspire them to go do something. Lead by your example, lead by your voice, lead by your influence. That's what great leaders do. And you see that, man, the world is absolutely has amazing examples of this, of 
well, the good and the bad of what it means to be an extraordinary leader. But if your leadership is all about what's in for me, what can I get, what can I take, will I earn more, will I get enough, will it be, that's not leadership, that's greed, that's taking, it's not giving. And my observation is that the sweetest moments of my real estate career, when I was selling the most real estate, when I was selling 100 plus homes a year, those beautiful moments where it became so easy was because when I showed up, it wasn't about what I could take, it was about what I could give. It wasn't about what I could earn, it was about how much I could earn for them. And all of a sudden, when I started taking care of the people, and I put a lot less focus on me, ironically, I earned more. That is leadership. That is what this group, the stewardship of Everest is all about. What is ESS? People always ask, what is ESS? Should I go? Should I not go? I don't know. For two and a half days, we'll talk about this stuff. And for two and a half days, you'll get all this stuff. Do I think you should go talk to Mark and Austin and Brad? And when they call you, go, oh, no, no, I'm not interested. I already paid enough money to Everest. Oh, oh, okay. Are you an idiot? Like, are you really that seriously dumb to think about the fact that you could learn how to be an extraordinary leader to take your business to extraordinary levels? And then I see people in the room like Amy Clark, Jessica Terry, Dave Parker, and I then people go, well, they're just lucky. No, they're committed to becoming an extraordinary leader. And that's how you win the game of real estate. It's how you win in life. And it will be the single most important skill set that you will ever learn in your lifetime. Remember, leadership is all about the psychology. It's your belief that you are in the right place at the right time, that you are the right agent for the job. You believe you can sell the home or help them find one, that you can get the job done. And yet we will then focus and say, oh, well, you didn't, you, you upswing when you set that script. That's not real estate leadership. That's not selling real estate. Yes, you can learn a skill. But the reality is what's going on right here in your heart and your mind. And the center that you find yourself is what leadership is all about. Make sense? Everybody take a big deep breath here. Are we going okay here? All right. Now, breathe. Breathe. Now, breathe. Okay. All right? All right. So I'm just, I, I, I'm kind of passionate about this for me. <laughs> because I see people like, like, just the epidemic of real estate agents looking at everything outside of them. Well, you know, had better leads. Well, you know, if the market had more inventory. Well, you know, if the rates were a little bit lower. Well, if there weren't so many real estate agents. If they didn't ask me to discount their commission. If they didn't, you know, if, you know, if there wasn't so many agents calling that one lead. Well, if there wasn't so many offers on that table. Who do you think they choose? They choose the leader. So when I ask again, someone like a Dave or a Nikki, or someone else that needs in this room at a high level, what happens is this. You have problems getting offers accepted. What do you think their answers are? No? I mean, we've got to change a few things, be a little more influential, do this, do that. But no. Why is that? You actually think it's just the price that you offer? It's not. It's who shows up who leads even the other agent on the other side. It's who leads the client. It's who leads maybe the sellers who are going to accept an offer. It's all leadership. And when I realized that in my early 20s, it changed the whole course of my life. And when I was 19, with the death of my sister, it was the great aha. As I looked around, for some reason, I'm so aware, and I looked around, saw no one beating. People screaming, people yelling, people crying, people in hysterics, but no one beating. So I challenge you, I invite you, Andrew, to become the leader that you're called to be. So let's talk to us about a few things. I think we talked about a few things already. Didn't we? Judy, did we, Mark, did we talk about a few things? Just a few. Okay. All right. Chad, are we doing okay back there? All right. All right. You know, I used to think the guys in the back were the guys who weren't doing much. You didn't notice the guys in the back were the ones who seem to be making all the money. I don't know what's going on. Right? I don't know. Dave's back there saving seats in the back row, making sure it has to get that back. But I don't know. Maybe there's something we can learn about all this. You know? All right. Okay, number one. Some of the 
these are going to seem like you've heard them before. That's because you have. All right? Unless somehow I forgot something. Number one, write down vision. All right? Great leaders have a great vision. I'm not going to spend a ton of time. I was down in Orem talking to the group down there with Matt and Jason. And, you know, look. But vision. Where the people have no vision, they perish, right? They perish with no vision. It's not a new concept. It's in the good book. Everyone talks about it. Everyone says it. But can you see it? See, it's one thing that you just kind of meander through your life. But have you set firm, strong, direct, demanding goals of yourself? This is where my health will be. This is where my relationships will be. This is where my business will be. This is the amount of money I'll earn. This is the amount of transactions I will do. Or is it, well, I'm just trying to do some business. The market's really tough. Well, I can tell you, at my worst moments, days before, days before, if it wasn't for the gift of a great friendship of an Aaron Richardson, I wouldn't even be living in the same home I live in today because I was on the verge of leaving it, losing it. That was 13 years ago. But in those same days, I had halfway up Mount Lewis, and I stood on a rock and I looked over this entire Salt Lake City Valley. And I said, I will create the number one real estate company in the state. Now, I am a numbers guy, but I always like to be verified by very, by very uh, strong and strong analytical individuals like Matt Barton, who verified and who has said, you realize that last year you were the number one company in the state of Utah for home sales. Your closest competitor was 400 homes away from you. 13 years ago, I had a vision that we would create this. When you meet someone who is all bumped out, ripped, totally like, like, totally like, you know, like, you're like, oh my gosh, you can break me in one minute. You just like sapped me, you break me in half, kind of like strength. You know, they've been working out, their diet's been great, and they say, you say, hey, how'd you do it? They don't say, oh, well, you know, I just got lucky. <laughs> You know that that wasn't true. True. And yet, the reality is that for some reason, so many of us think that people got lucky. Yeah, maybe there was a little luck along the way, a little bit of good fortune along the way, but it wasn't an overnight success. It was a clear vision of this is what I see in that example, my body's going to be. And this example is what this company is going to be. Does it be surprised as to the fact that you earn a lot of money? As you've heard this story before, when Edmund, his friend, and Hillary stood at the top of Mount Everest. Mount Everest, that would have been a great time. Everest. Right? He stood at the top of Everest. And he didn't even take a picture. He comes down. He's asking, he goes, life was bad just like I imagined it. 10,000 times before. If you can't see yourself succeeding, how can you? If you can't see yourself with the business, how can you? And as the little Instagram post just came up of some talk down in Orange, I said, man, there's nothing on this earth that has ever been created that was not first seen. Whether it's the pyramids of Giza, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc of Triumph, the hotels of, of, of Las Vegas, the Golden Gate Bridge, any great thing was seen first. And then, of course, there was all the people who said, that can't be done. You can't do that. It's never been done. And yet we're seeing people in this very room do things that have never been done because they have figured out how to have a vision to put on the blinders, to ignore what everyone else has to say, but to truly lead their life in the direction they see it. If you have not gotten clear on where you're going, you have got to take some time and do that. Stop making phone calls and start seeing the vision. Then make the phone calls. But if you're just beating your head against the wall because... Well, Rick said I should make calls. Ruby said I didn't knock some doors. Okay, this sucks. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, would you like me to help you sell a home? No? Okay, thank you. You're walking down the next one and you're complaining and whining about how bad life is, how you're not earning enough money, how no one's listening with you, no one's saying it comes to me because you 
don't know where you're going. I challenge you to go to 10 people that you know and ask them, what is the most important goal that you have right now? And look at them in the eye and see whether or not you believe them. I hope that you're asked, how much money will you earn? And you will feel as to whether, when you, when someone asks you, or you ask someone, you say, how much money are you gonna make, Bryce? And then I will tell you, I will be able to feel it immediately whether he believes that. I mean, it's so incredible. You see someone like Amber making $200,000. I remember when she would drive through blizzards and snowstorms for Midway or Hebrew to be here for this. And some of you are like, well, I don't know. I mean, we might talk past the 130 hour. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've heard his stories before. She had $200,000 in the last three months. $200,000! And said, yeah, but I'm not really into motivation. <laughs> just something thing. Some of you are just screaming right now in your head to get out of here. I can just see in your eyes. <laughs> and yet the reality is, you want to go chase one deal or we can go help you go figure out how to do 50, 75, or 100, or 200, or 300 deals. That's the beauty of leadership and who you become. Watching journeys like Dave Parker, Nikki, Amber, and Matt, and others that I know, and I'm, and I'm, there's so many I can meet through here. I mean, gosh, my good friend Sean Hill back there that I've known for so many years, and watching him move through the difficulties and rise well above them. Right? People who have had great loss, and the loss of like, his mother, you know, Dave losing his sister, his, his brother-in-law. I mean, things, I mean, Nikki losing her son, and, and Mark, I mean, my gosh, I mean, people going through divorces, tragedy, and watching so many of you persevere, that is leadership. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's the beauty of what you're doing and what you're accomplishing through thick and thin, through challenges come and going, is still persevering, you still do it. So vision, how second, moved into it, persistence and patience. I've always said, I always want patience. I just want it right now. I want it right now. <laughs> right? I always wanted patience. Right? But being patient, you're going to go back to like a day. I actually still remember the story of Chad Blackstaff when an agent came and said, no, I, don't think, I don't think Chad's going to make it in this business. <laughs> no, I know Steph. I, mean, I, I said, not rude. And I said, what do you mean? I, I just say, no, Chad, true story. I said, I knew right then and there it was a leadership issue, not his, but the person who he was working with. And I love this guy. But I knew that was the problem. Because all of a sudden, how about this? He gets with, aligned with Dave. Here's a guy making three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year now. And the guy, one, one leader said, I don't think he can make it. Isn't that interesting to you? Does that fascinate you? And in a moment's notice, life can change so radically and so quickly and so fast because of who you choose to become as a leader? That's the beauty of all of this. And I see so many of you, you know, go through your life where you do have the tragedies, but you still rise above them. That is the coolest part of what we all do together. Don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose that. Let it be bigger than just me. Let it be bigger than just even you. Let it be what Everest really is. Right? Like your Camelot at some level. The greatest gathering of real estate professionals the world has ever seen. A whole different standard of how so homes are sold, homes are purchased, because of who you are, because of the way you persist, and the way in which you are patient through the process. Recognizing that it is a process, that it will take time. But you can do it, because you have so many examples around you as to where you can go. So many examples. Okay? Third thing, right now, just because we're running out of time. Third thing, write down belief. The one thing fundamentally, I think I appreciate it, by the way, you know, you may or may not know her, but Aaron Moore right here. Did you too? I got Aaron Naylor here, Aaron Moore here. But Aaron, I don't know if you know, I remember when she sat in my office and telling me all the things that she was going to do. Now, just so you know, many of you sat in my office or overheard what you say you're going to do. I'm like, okay. Um, but she did that, and I don't know if I said, uh, okay, well, but I, I went, okay, and 
And you know what's pretty fascinating to me? Is you're doing it. I think it's amazing, Aaron, and especially you're another individual who's had great loss most recently in your life. And I've watched what you guys do, but it's because of what you believe is possible. You know, I, I remember so vividly the moments when I started to believe what was possible. Remember, 80% of leadership is psychology. So what do you believe? What do you believe is possible? See, here's the great tragedy of humanity. They believe everybody else but maybe themselves. They believe the opinions of what people say they can't do or what's not possible. And all of you have heard my story, if you haven't, right? As a young man, reach it. I just, just uh, two weeks ago, I went and parked in front of, in fact, actually it was with you, Steph. I went and parked in front of the house that I jumped off of the deck. And I, I was about four or five years old. I climbed over, as you many of you know, and I stood there at the edge looking over, ready to jump. And to her, so she knows, you know, as a witness to her, she goes, holy crap, that's a pretty far jump. I was like, no. <laughs> four, baby. Four. And I stood there, and my mom shrieked as she saw me on the other side of it and said these words, if you do that, you're going to die. Well, one other day or two later, maybe a week later, whoever knows when it was, it was so long ago, I called over again. But this time, at least, I did put a little waiting pool down at the Walmart, kind of a little waiting pool. And I put it down there. And I had some really serious knee problems and a back problem. This may be the reason why. And I jumped. And I can still remember that day where I landed that thud. I remember standing there kind of like, you know, okay, I've made it. Raising my hands in the air and going, yes! I'm alive, I'm running around the corner and telling my mom, I made it, I made it, I made it, I'm alive. I didn't die, mom. <laughs> Freaked out, I died. I just was verifying the story one time. Right? As long as you imagine things, just only a few months, a month or so ago, I was asking my dad, hey, that happened. Oh, yeah, I don't remember getting that call. I came home from work early, and man, I put you in a room, yelled, screamed, and then my mom's like, oh, gosh, don't be so hard on you. He almost died. I'll kill him anyway. You know <laughs> But look, how many people tell you what you can't do? And I'm telling you to go jump off cliffs. I'm not telling you to jump off two-story decks. What I am telling you is that even that moment, man, something inside of me said, do not tell me I can't. Only me. How many of you have bought into what everyone else thinks you can't do or can do? Now here's what's crazy. Life is so simple and yet so complex because people be like, you can do it. You, you, you can do it, Christ. Oh, oh my gosh! Hold on, you exceeded my expectations. Now I don't like you. You know, now we can't be friends. In the words of John Huntsman, who said, I found out who my true friends were when I was successful, not when I was losing everything. Think about that. Because so many people put limitations like, oh, Christ, you're going to be so successful. I mean, I mean, I mean, once you go beyond like what I thought you could do, well, then we, you know, well, then now that's a problem. We, we, we probably can't be friends now. How many people have left your life because of your success? How many people do you grovel and lower your standards because somehow you're supposed to believe like them? How many times have you had to have conversations with people or where you discount, like, well, I'm, I'm going on this trip that well, I just want you to know I'm, I'm doing it with miles. And well, I mean, the, the hotel was really cheap. How many of you can just go, I'm going to Paris. I'm going to the Four Seasons. And I'm going to live large in charge in Paris. <laughs> and the, or do you have like, oh, I better like lower it down here. Just so you know, I'm one of those guys that you can come to and tell me any part of your dream. And I'll be like, yes! That is so cool! And then you'll have people be like, I don't know. I mean, couldn't you do it cheaper? <laughs> well, you just think you're so cool because you're achieving all these things. How dare you tell me how great your life is? Because mine isn't. Your yours is, and so now we can't be friends. Just want you to think about how you're spending your time, who you're spending it with, what are your beliefs, what is creating the psychology for you? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you listening to? All of these things create a mindset for you and a psychology as to what type of leader and what is possible for you. Look, there's only these types of thinkers, big thinkers, small thinkers, and non-thinkers. Setting aside the people who don't think at all, most people are small thinkers. Well, if I could just
just get water. If I could just make my house payment. If I could just, if we could just, you know, go and do something like maybe we really push the envelope here and we go down to Temple Square for vacation. <laughs> All my California people will like it. All right? It's a happy year this year. We're not going anywhere cold. We're going to go into the desert. <laughs> Camp. Right? Yes. I'm just telling you, man. Where did you go? Where's the leader of your own life? You're like, I'm thinking it. I believe it. I'm going to persist. I'm going to be patient. And I'm going to go do it. Let me leave you with my last point. Hard work. I have five minutes. But hard work. Man, all great leaders work hard. Yeah, but 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 I watched The Secret, <laughs> and it said that if I sit on my butt and I just wait, it'll happen. <laughs> okay. Maybe you should believe in the law of action, which is get your mind right. We talked about. Right? Get your heart right, your feeling right, like this is where I'm going, and then you act right. Guess what? It will attract extraordinary things into your life. But it's not just one part. It's not just sit and wait. There's a part of life that is action. There's a part of it that is emotion. No doubt there's a spiritual side to our life. Man, if you could bring all of that together mentally, emotionally, physically, what could you really create in your life? What could come about because all of a sudden, not someone who sits and waits, not someone who just hopes it works out, but someone who is so destined for greatness and possibility because you're so clear on the outcome that you want. If you are finding yourself anxious, disconnected, disinterested, I can promise you, it is because somehow, somewhere along the path, you have lost the vision and the emotion for what you want. It's the case for any of us. It's human nature. You lose your vision, you perish. You lose your vision, you stop working. If you lose your vision, but you're still working, you start hating what you're doing. You create resistance, resentment because there is no vision emotionally and mentally to what you want. Again, I go back to like, what is like the ESS stuff about? We're gonna spend a lot of time in summits talking about the mental, the psychological, the emotional side of doing business. I have you come, I want you here because I want you to be inspired. But is the reasons for the morning ascents that Ruby and Rick and others do such an extraordinary job of? Why we role play? Why we practice? Why we do all of these different things so that you don't get to just set in into survival? Have you noticed that very few people step over into pure security? Agents are renowned, we're renowned for stepping over to survival, jumping a little bit over to security, jump right back to survival, and the ebbs and the flows of the market. I want you so secure, so free, so independent, so rich, so wealthy in every area of your life. But the reality is the ultimate person wanting that isn't me. And I can't want your dreams, your goals more than you want them. But you have to want them. You have to say, you know what, enough. I go back to where I started. You were called. And I believe many of you here have been called many a times to lead. And you let that voice in your head pull you back. Well, what will people say? What will people think? What will people do? Stop that and lead. Lead with the voice that you know is yours. The one that says step forward. The one that says speak up. The one that says step aside. I'm here. It's all going to be okay. That's leadership. That's what a client needs. That's what your kids need. Your sons need, it's what your children, your daughters need, it's what your spouse needs, it's what your best friends need, it's what this community needs, this nation, it's what the world needs. So you keep pushing about it, you're going to look from afar and let everybody else lead. Or you can step forward and you can be the leader in every area that you step forward into. My promise is.
is, is that you do that, man, the sky is the limit. You will rise above all of the chatter, all of the crazy conversations, all of the people who want to try to take you down, point a finger at you, tell you how lucky you are, tell you how bad you are, tell you how you shouldn't have this, you shouldn't be having that, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, tell me what you should do with your time, tell me what you should do with your money, tell me what you should be doing with your team, tell me what you should do with your business. You can set it all aside because you don't need an opinion. You may take their advice, you may take their counsel under advice, but you know who you are because you know that you're a leader. So let's just leave with this. Count of three. And it, it, we, only, we may only have to do this, this, this once, Kelly. I mean, Stephanie, once. But it's just once, maybe, if we can actually say it with some type of. I'm talking kind of a Rick Bentley type of power. <laughs> All right, we can't. That's pretty tough. I mean, have you seen it? Oh, okay. It got scary when I saw him, like, you know, like, I mean, I saw the affirmations yesterday and I forgot the intensity of this young man over here. And I, <laughs> You know, I mean, it, 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 it can shake the room. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for, Jeff. Nick, you with me? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I pick on anybody else that I need to talk to in here. I could pick on my son back there. Good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do this. I just want you to feel what it means to just simply say, I am a leader. And we can just, we can do this well enough, Nikki. I mean, you can be the judge. I'll let you judge everybody. Like the quality of my own. All right? You help me. All right? All right? I just want to just, it just, like, I can tell you that some of you, when you will say it out loud, you'll be like, oh, 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 no, I've always deferred that. That's, oh, no, no, that's my husband. He, no, no. But, uh, that, that's, uh, that's another top agent. Uh, you know, that, that, that's not me. I mean, I, I've never looked at myself as a leader. You'll feel all those different things when you say it, or you may just simply embrace it. My challenge is that, man, if you could just every single day just stand in front of that mirror and go, I am a leader. I am a leader. I lead. I make a difference. As I've told you many times, I walk out every morning, I look up the sky and say, who is the one person that I will make a difference for today? Because my commitment to lead is so high. I am no different. I am no better than you. But I would challenge you because you can, you should, and you are called to do so. All right, you ready, Nikki? All right, here we go. Category one, I'm a leader. I should have stand up. Stand. All right, we're gonna bring it back up. All right, Bryce, you ready now? All right, Steph, you ready? Everybody ready? Yeah. 